All right, number two, uh, what is the height of the guardrail at the stair landing referenced in the previous question? So this one's a pretty s straightforward uh, issue as well. Uh, when we're talking about, you know, something like a guardrail, um, we're talking about there's somebody standing in the space. Uh, they're, uh, while they're standing, they're standing on the edge of something. This is maybe a big drop, and we're worried that they're just going to fall right off. So we need to give them some way that they're not going to fall off, and we put a guardrail there. Uh, that guardrail, in terms of uh, the IBC, the Inter International Building Code, is going to be 42 inches. So 42 inches above the finished floor. So the answer for this one is going to be a write-in, and you're going to say 42 inches, or 3 foot 6. Uh, now, in certain jurisdictions, that would actually be 36 inches. I don't, I've never seen one that was any different, it was a different number than either 36 or 42. It's, uh, guardrails, I think, are always either 36 or 42. Um, but the 36s are essentially being sort of weeded out over the years um, and uh, will probably be gone in a relatively short order. 42 is much, much more um, uh, typical and IBC, uh, which is what the uh, exam is based on, is always going to be using that IBC. So let's think about a couple of other issues while we're talking about it. So this is for a guardrail. What if this had said handrail, right? If that had said handrail instead of guardrail, this would be a very different question. So what we'd be talking about there, oops, not quite flat there. All right, so I've got a stair. I'm going to go from the nosing straight up, and I'm going to go up uh, either two foot nine or two foot ten. Uh, there's a little bit of wiggle room in there um, because there's lots of different situations and different stairs and different types of populations. Uh, so that's either um, uh, 33 or 34 inches, two foot nine or two foot ten, uh, and then I'm going to use that as my height that's going to be, would be the height of the handrail. So the guardrail, just like the word, uh, it's guarding you from, from falling off. The handrail is something you're supposed to touch. It's something that you need to get up and down the stair. Uh, so that guardrail is going to be at 33 inches or 34 inches. Um, so we can immediately sort of see what's happening there. Uh, while we're kind of looking at it, you may notice that I drew uh, these uh, steps uh, kind of rise, run in sort of an odd way. Um, I'm going to sort of zoom in a little bit here. Uh, you know, kind of the classic uh, residential system might be a uh, riser that looks something like that, a uh, tread that goes flat across, another one that comes up, a little nosing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but what I was drawing there was one that angles and then flattens out and then angles and then flattens out. Those are supposed to be the same angle. Uh, and why was I drawing it like this and not with the nosing? Because a commercial stair these days, if you imagine somebody walking up that, that stair, um, let's see, there's my boot um, with a very thin, uh, thin leg coming out of it. Uh, and this person is catching their toe on that nosing. So as you're going up the stairs and each one of those uh, uh, steps, there's a potential for a little trip hazard there. If I have this angle, then there's nothing there to stop uh, the boot. So the boot will just slide right up and over and get to the step as, a, as appropriate. So uh, one of the things you'll see for a commercial stair, you probably should not ever see that nosing anymore. You used to see them, but you probably really shouldn't see them anymore. Uh, another thing you might sort of be curious about is what happens with uh, uh, these uh, railings as they get down to the end. Um, when I get to the landing at the end, uh, for one, they don't stop right at the base of the step. They actually will continue past. Uh, there's a couple of different situations, uh, so I won't get too deep into it, but typically it's about 12 inches. Uh, sometimes it's a, right, uh, it's, excuse me, it's a tread plus 12. Um, but it's going to go at least that far, uh, 12 inches. And if you think about, like, well, why is that? It seems weird that you would force the, 
handrail to go past the edge of the steps. But the answer to that is, again, if uh, you're having a little trouble getting up and down the stairs, it's really handy to get sort of settled holding on to that handrail before you actually start making your way up the stairs. So you get a chance, you're still on the landing, I can grab onto it, and now I can start moving up and use that handrail to help me get up uh, to the top. A uh, couple other sort of little quick issues while we're talking about stairs. So that's our uh, switchback stair. Uh, where is that handrail? Is it in the uh, inside of the run or is it on the outside of the run? So is this the handrail? Well, yeah, I need it to be on the inside, but I also need it to be on the outside. So I'm going to see handrails on both sides uh, of, of that so that either way, whichever hand is a good hand for somebody who's going up and down, they can use that handrail to, to uh, help themselves get up and down. Does that outside one have to wrap all the way around? Uh, no, it doesn't, though you can. Um, it just needs to have that extension pass that we just talked about. Uh, if th this is where my door is, uh, and this is the travel path of somebody on that landing, and I think, well, wouldn't it be great to give them more space? Like, why just give them only the space they need? Maybe I should make this landing even bigger, so it's even safer? What do you think about that? Well, the downside with that is I know what I would do if I was the building owner. I would fill that with I don't know, boxes of paper and paint and things like that because it would be this excess space that would, could be really great for storage. And that's exactly the wrong thing to do in that stairwell. So code officials actually don't want you to do that. They want you to keep it nice and like right exactly at what's expected. Uh, so the travel path is uh, clear. There's a little bit of extra room past that and that's it. Because uh, if you start having extra room, people will fill that space with something. Suddenly you'll have furniture and all kinds of things there. And then up at the uh, landing level where the door is, I have the travel path again. And then I've got a little extra space there. What's that about? Well, clearly that's where the area of refuge is going to go. So that area of refuge and this door swing are outside of the travel path. Now typically there's a little bit of overlap that's allowed, uh, but it would uh, tell you about uh, how much of an overlap because that's a little different from uh, municipality to municipality. So a couple of very simple uh, sets of uh, numbers, but uh, all of these things you should feel very, very comfortable with uh, in order to uh, start thinking about taking this exam because it will absolutely show up in a couple of different places. We do have one question here. Uh, John asks, is it really 33 or is it actually 34? He had always thought that it was 34 to 38 inches. Um, uh, 33, 34 is the typical for a handrail, um, though some situations will allow you to go up a little bit higher. Uh, the, you know, that's an interesting question for IBC. I always use 34, um, uh, and I, actually it's a good question. I should really check that out because uh, I may be using an older number uh, just from my old days, but like I say, I always use 34, uh, which is 2 foot 10. Uh, 38 is actually really high for most people and actually quite difficult for most people. So as a general number, that's just not a very good number. There are certain situations where uh, the codes allow for uh, a higher height like that, um, but it's not, it, uh, in general, it's not a very nice height to, to work with, for, especially for an older person. Cool. So good question. Uh, Rachel notes that California code is a minimum of 34 to 38, so it may be regional. Right? Yeah, maybe, maybe a little regional. 34 is definitely the sort of go-to number that I would take away from that. <laughs>